Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, lovely to see you here on this sunny evening. Very nice of you to come indoors. Um, I'm Kate Moss. I'm the biographer of CFT and a novelist and a playwright myself. And it's my enormous pleasure uh, to be introducing this evening as the pre-performance talk before a damsel in distress, uh, Rob Ashford, who is theatre royalty. Uh, he is a Tony Award winner, he's an Olivier Award winner, an Emmy Award winner, drama desk, critic circle, <laughs> almost every single thing, actually. Yeah, well... Yeah? yeah. There's no Oscar. That is there. you. No Oscar. No. Okay, well, we will sort that something out. Something to look forward to, maybe. Yeah, no, someday, something to yeah. look forward to. Um, before we start, um, can I just ask, who has seen Damsel so far? Oh, good. You're, yeah, yeah, you're the early birds. Who is going in later? <laughs> okay, shall I do the normal gag? Who has not yet, not yet bought a ticket? Right, see me later. That's fantastic. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is the usual thing. We're going to talk for about uh, 30 minutes as if you're not there at all. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, and then, of course, we will release the stage uh, back for the company to do their warm-up. Because otherwise, those of you going in tonight will have no show. And that will obviously be a disaster. That's a good show as well, watching That's the a good show. But no, the warm up, yes, but warm -up you really should fun. sell tickets for that. They should sell tickets Yeah, for that. do you think we so? Is there anybody here from the theatre? <laughs> right, Kate, that's your job. Um, Rob, it's a brilliant thing to have you here because actually, despite your enormous successful record, both mm. in New York and America and here and in the UK, this is your CFT debut. It is. It is so, my first So how did we yeah. manage to nab you to come down here? Well, I mean, you know, everyone knows about this theatre and everyone knows it's a great theatre. I mean, everyone in the business knows it. And uh, I met with Jonathan Church, who I really, really liked a lot and... and, uh, and uh, He's a hard person to say no to because he's so enthusiastic. He's wonderful. He had a really good, um, you know, uh, pitch for the show and why it's right for here. And uh, so I'm, I'm very, I feel honored to, to be able to work here. So I'm, I've had a really amazing time, really. And you guys are a big part of that, too. The audiences have been, you know, previews are tough on a new musical because... Uh, well, a new play as, as well, but a musical, I think, because there's so many more elements. So somehow it's really, really helpful to have enthusiastic audiences, full audiences, people coming with, you know, uh, it feels like, you know, discerning taste but open mind, you know. So I would venture to say all of you that have seen it so far, if you didn't come all on the same night, you've seen a different show every night because we have changed <laughs> things and added things and cut things uh, even today. So, uh, so it's been, uh, uh, you know, we, when we do a new musical in New York, we have four weeks of previews. So we had a week and a half here, so, uh, which is actually... Tiny. It's tiny for, mm. for a new piece and trying all the new things you want to try. And, for example, we did a new, uh, uh, a new uh, arrangement and a dance for, uh, for Summer and uh, Mel and the girls in Nice Work, if you can get it. But see, that has to be written by the arranger, it has to be orchestrated by the orchestrator, then it has to be copied by the copyist for all of the orchestra, and then it has to be taught to the actors, and then it has to be taught to the orchestra, and then we have to put it together. So that's just for one, one change. That's just for one added dance. So it's, it's quite a process. So you, um, it takes a while to, to you know, execute changes in a... I mean, one of the things I think all of us here would say is that over the time that Jonathan Church and Alan Finch have been mm -hmm. here, They've built up that idea of the musical. Mm. And I think we would all feel, as audience members, that we know about musicals. Don't you think? I mean, where, you know, they've done amazing work here. Mm. But, of course, this was a novel, 1919. Mm. It was then a black and white silent film, right. 1920. It was then a stage play, 1928. Then 1937, it was right. a, a film. Mm. So what is it that made this the moment to go, you know what? We're missing the musical. You well, know, how has that come about? Well, I mean, I think that that was, you know, uh, Jeremy Sams. Jeremy Sams and, and, and Robbie Hudson, who uh, works with, who's worked with Jeremy on this. And just the idea that uh, I think Jeremy was very intrigued by uh, the collaboration between Woodhouse and the Gershwins on the film and, and felt like uh, that that needed to continue in some way. Hmm. And... Uh, 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 
uh, and that's that's what we have here. That's what this is. Had you mm -hmm. seen? Had you either read the novel or seen the film or seen the play? How how much yes, did you I'm know not seen about the play. it? I I didn't know I didn't know anything about it till it was brought to me. But then of course watched the film and mm. and read the read the book as well. Uh, but uh, didn't didn't really know of it b beforehand. Really. Is that um, more exciting as someone at your level to hear about something that you? You don't know. You've not been sitting there. You know, yeah. it's not going to be your Hamlet. Yes. You're not going, yeah, one day yeah. I'm going to oh, yeah. do Hamlet. Well, it's know? also a nice, a nice uh, art imitating life thing that it's about uh, Brits and Americans coming together and Jeremy and Robbie and myself. It's the same kind of idea, you know, bringing the American, putting the American into the, into the, into the Woodhouse world. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, is so that, that how you feel? That's nice. Is that what it's Sometimes, been like being down yeah. in Sussex? <laughs> yeah, no, it's been good. It's been great, though. I, I, Staying I in Amberley. Yeah. You know, when you see this, I, I won't spoil it, but there are mm. shades of Amberley and possibly Arundel mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to come. So and I thought that was rather wonderful those. that yeah, you would really, actually... Yeah, really, really nice. <laughs> it was really nice. The, uh, everyone came last Sunday uh, to, uh, to Amberley Castle for afternoon tea and we just had a really great time because it was like, oh my gosh, this is the play we're doing. We're, you're, yeah. you're like living in the play that we're doing here. It's so how it's we live nice. all the yeah. time, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Everyone has suits yeah. of armor, right? In your, yeah, and that's yeah. right. Okay. It's very inconvenient yeah. when you sit down, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so you, you'd done your research and you uh, came and you said yes to Jonathan. Yes, of course. Um, of course, uh, we all do. Um, but then when you're starting to put something together, you've got Jeremy Sams and all of you, I'm sure, will know that he is... Uh, the director and the writer of the rehearsal, um, the adapter uh, um, across the way. Very different piece of work. Mm. So you've got this core creative team. How do you then start building up everybody else? Is it actors next? Is it well, music next? It's, well, no, you, I think the, the whole team, I mean, our, um, uh, our designer, Christopher Oram, who I've worked with many times, who designed the show and who won a Tony last night for his costumes in Wolf Hall, uh, in New York, which is great, and even, and uh, so that was someone I wanted to work with, obviously mm. again because I really uh, I love working with him. Also, David Chase, who is a a, a a music arranger, dance arranger, musical supervisor that I work with on all the shows in New York that I do. He and he also did our dance arrangements for the Guys and Dolls I did with Michael Grandage in the West End and Evita as well that I did with Michael. And uh, so David came on board to help with the, the musical bits and Bill Elliott, who is our uh, orchestrator for, for, the, for the show, also won a Tony yes. last night for American <laughs> in Paris. So we, we're, we're very happy today. Everyone was cheering them on. So, uh, uh, so, that so you nice. put that creative team, team together at the heart. Yes. So that's the heart right. of it. If, that's you the know, heart. Yeah. And then uh, the casting. And, then the and did you, when you read it, immediately think, okay, it's the girl first, well, it's the boy first? No, it, 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 I wish it could be that simple. It isn't that simple, really. Somehow it's, it's all in the alchemy of it all. So uh, we'd done two readings of this in London. And by readings, I mean we basically sat around a table and read it out loud. They learned the music. Uh, a few people came in and just to watch. Uh, not an audience, just uh, um, other uh, theater folks and so in but in those two readings we found some great people who were terrific so that when we started casting this there were a few of those that we wanted to ask right away uh to be a part of it because they were so i'm really sorry this is right. just to interrupt this but so when you do a reading mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you've chosen your people you try it no. out with just different voices to yeah, start that's with right. that's right that's i mean it is i mean when you're doing a reading uh, if it's something that it's going to have a production are you you certainly keep that in mind, but that it isn't, you know, you have no idea. And it's also if the people are going to work out in the reading or if they'd be interested in doing the show. I mean, a couple of people that we really liked in the reading weren't available for the show. And, mm. you know, so... Uh, uh, so it's like a jigsaw, it, really. It is a jigsaw yeah. puzzle. And also with a new piece, it's very tricky because you don't really know what it's going to become. It really does have a, a life and mind of its own in a way. <laughs> so you try to cast in a way wide with a, a large group of talent so that you and then when you're in it you realize boy I wish I wish you know X tapped better or I wish so and so could also dance because then I could put them in that number and I wish that so so many things like that that you don't know the first time out so you just do your best really and uh, 
Uh, I would say about half the cast I've worked with before in different things, and about half are brand new to me, and I, I love that combination. I think mm. that makes for the best mm. work somehow. Uh, people that, uh, are, are, that know you and, and, and how you work and, and can make everyone feel comfortable about that in, in case there's some issues, like it seems like we're going really fast, and then they can say, don't worry, don't, we'll go back, don't worry, it's an issue. Uh, and then also a, a lot of new people to, to discover what, the, what they have to offer. So it's been a really good uh, discovery of a lot of you know, really talented folks. But it's also a, a wonderful thing watching. I saw it on Thursday night um, that you have this incredibly en energetic cast. You've got a proper, you know, sort of song and dance cast. Yeah. But you've also got in, in the character roles right. some great actors in Nicholas Farrell, yeah. Ida yeah. Blair, yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, the great right. Desmond Barrett. Yeah, that's right. um, so was that a conscious decision to yes, put great actors in yes. those smaller oh, yeah, you, roles? It, need, yeah. it, it needs that. Yeah. I think all musicals need that. I think that's yeah. the underselling of musicals, that all you need are great singers and dancers who can just, you know, and, and, and um, our... More recent musicals, sometimes it's, it's only a page of dialogue to get from song to song, and so nobody really cares about the acting. I'm, I'm, that's a generalization, but I think that's a mistake. Mm. And with, a, with a piece like this and with all of the, you know, there's a lot of words and a lot of character and a lot, a lot to get across, I think the actors are key. I think that, that that's mm. what makes a musical, really. Yes, because there was you know. a depth to it, depth actually. To it. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're yeah. not just skating on the surface of these characters till they sing the high note, you know. And also, I think for, for many of us here who've seen those actors in different roles, mm -hmm. it's that lovely sense of, oh, hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're Dempsey in safe too, hands right? again. Richard Dempsey, he's been, yeah, he's yeah. been here before. Richard Dempsey well. also. Terrific, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, so one of the things you said a, a moment ago was about how even today you were cutting things and mm -hmm. press night is Wednesday. So it is, that's it is. the moment that you lock it down, yes, presumably, because yeah. the yeah. critics have seen it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we won't change it. Why... Anything. Are you still changing things? What is going on at this stage in a, in a musical? Well, what's going on is we've added the other key element. Pardon me, I have a little allergy in my left eye today. Sussex uh, allergies. Yeah. It's horrible. But uh, we've added a, a, a very important ingredient, and that is you, the audience. And uh, the audience has a way of telling you there's something, it's, uh, it's the weirdest thing. But you can sit in this empty theater and you can watch it and think, okay, that works, that's good. That's... And somehow when you get in here and... And even if it isn't the idea of like it's a joke that falls flat or a number that doesn't get applause, I mean just the general feeling of the whole thing, <laughs> you, you, you tell us what it is. We just know what's, what works and what doesn't. We know when you're impatient. We know when you're ahead of us. We know, uh, and, and we need you to know that. So that's why we do it. And so, especially I would say anybody that comes in we had a, in, in previews, you know, you are instrumental in the making of a musical if you come in previews. How you're responding is instrumental. We are desperate for you. We're desperate for your input in a way. And, and, and I don't mean like coming up at the end and saying like, I didn't like her red dress. <laughs> Even though that's okay too sometimes. It's, it's, you know, but, uh, but the idea of, of what you're getting and what you're not getting. So... Uh, um, uh, but it's, it's how crucial. can you tell, Rob, whether it's a matter of pace or a matter well, of error in terms yeah. of how a scene well, is going? A lot of that's instinct. You know, you just mm. try to use your instinct and, mm. and you talk to your collaborators. And uh, uh, that is the great thing about a musical is you do have a collaborative team. You know, you have the, the, the writers, if, if they are indeed, you know, with you, if it's not a revival of something. You've got your musical supervisor, your conductor, you've got quite a few people to, to kind of gather around and say, okay, what do you think of that, this mm. beat? What do you think of that beat? It's a little different on a play because you're much more alone in a way. But, uh, um, uh, but it's, the, it's, the thrilling, it's the thrilling time, too, to make those. Uh, and then you've got the actors who have their own sense of it from, from what the audience is giving back. So um, it's a very vital time. It can be, it can be so exhausting for, for everyone involved because everyone really just wants to get it right. Uh, that is everyone's goal. And, and it's to serve the greater good of the show uh, and the audience's enjoyment of the show is the key. That's what, what we're really after. So sometimes we get rid of things that we particularly might like, but we just realize the audience is getting ahead there. And I think for you to have your proper enjoyment of it, we need to stay ahead of you, really, in, in general. There might be moments that it's more fun, 
if you're ahead of us. But that's a moment as opposed to a show. That's just, you know, that's not, that's not as exciting for you, so. But there's a lovely sort of art imitating life moment there mm. because, of course, right at the early part of the show, there is absolutely a, a show within a show. Yeah. And the idea that, you know, one poor young actress is about to lose her one role, right, her you role know, part, her solo right. her, moment. Her solo moment, um, yeah. But, but presumably that is quite tough on the creative team. If you understand that actually this is beautiful, but mm. in fact it's holding back the piece rather than propelling it yes. forward. Yeah, yeah. Cutting things at the last moment for somebody. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you do that? It's, 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 it's tough. That is yeah, tough. It's yeah. tough love. It's something you have to do. And it's also, too, about uh, sometimes it's about having a better... You can be careful, though. You just start cutting too many things, you, you'll have holes. You have, to, you have to bind it together in a certain way, too. So uh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is tricky. It is a tricky bit. But, I mean, you know, you, you tell everyone from the beginning, you try to make them very aware that it's a new musical, and the first thing we said on the first day, and everyone had to chant it, was change is good. <laughs> change is good. You have to just take that on, really. And you turned it into addiction exercise. Yeah, change is change good. Change is good. Change is yeah. good yeah. Um, with a new musical, yeah. is, um, does it feel exciting because you're creating work for the very first time? Yeah. Or does it actually all of the anxiety about maybe there is a reason that this hasn't been a musical before, maybe this isn't the right format for the story. Do mm. those things kick I in? I think that that happens early on that. Yeah. That happens after the readings. You do those readings and you go like, I just don't know that this is gonna make a great musical really. Um, I think that once you get into the rehearsal room, I think you've got to believe in it enough to not mm. you know, doubt that at, at first, mm. I think. Mm. Um, uh, anymore, you've got to commit to it just like everyone does, and, and you know, go for it, as we would say, yeah. the American go. So for right, it. we've yeah. inherited that now. Yeah, just go. We for go it. for it yeah. also. Yeah, go for we it. We go for so. it slightly quieter, yeah. <laughs> slightly more politely. <laughs> yes. yeah. We don't drop any <laughs> accent. Um, but when you, um, uh, you know, what I was thinking when I was in the audience was, I'm a big fan, mm. and many people in this audience knew my my mum, who was a big fan of tap, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of tap. And so I was sitting there thinking, I really hope because this is, you know, a legit piece, it's a, it's a proper musical, mm. um, that there will be a big number. Um, when you're directing something, particularly a new piece, and you're mm. working with, you know, you're obviously a choreographer and you're yeah. in this as well, but the orchestration and the MD and everything, do you actually have in your mind, okay, we know that the audience likes a kind of modern piece, we know that they like a ballad, we know that they like tap, or is it the mm. story that decides what... It's the what, story. I mean, yeah. I think that, you know, you can't start out, I don't think, creating something, you know, trying to, uh, you know, please the audience, because there are many different audiences who like many different things. So some audiences would love a musical with tap, and some audiences would love a more serious mind to musical, and not when people just suddenly start tap dancing. So you know, it's, it's very different. I think that you just got to try to see what would be best in the piece. We weren't even sure we were going to have tap in the show, to be honest. We weren't really sure at all at the beginning. In fact, we didn't audition anybody as tappers at all hmm. because we weren't sure how the tap would fit in. And then we thought maybe the tap should only be in the performance bits, like the, the show within the show. Maybe that's the tap. And then there's a, a wonderful number in it called Fidgety Feet that just seemed like, okay, that feels like that could maybe mm. should be mm. the tap mm. and then but we did we did at least assign the tap to the americans in the show there are a couple of americans everyone else are, uh, uh, not and uh, we uh, we did assign that we did say okay but the the americans have to be involved in those numbers in, in a way that's their vocabulary that's their mm. thing mm. In, in, a, in a way so to try to make sense of it so we just didn't tap all the time the whole show just for the heck of it you know, because I think audiences get tired of that, and I think that a smart audience uh, has, uh, even, though you, even though you couldn't say that, you'd understand, though, that, that there was a reason behind it, or you'd understand there was, there was a certain rule yeah, yeah. to yeah. it, rather than just like, oh, they just tap when they want to tap, you mm. know. And actually, it worked precisely because the song is fidgety feet, that sort of sense that, you yeah. know, you're, yeah. you, you yeah. just can't quite right. help you yourself, can't and help it was yourself. fantastic. I'm just, I'm just wondering, has anybody read the P.G. Woodhouse novel? Did anybody know it from the novel? Had anybody 
seen the film? Play <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Excellent. Good. They are a virgin audience very for good. you, Rob. Yeah, very good. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, you know, I love Woodhouse, but mm -hmm. I haven't read it actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a, a fairy tale, really. Uh, yeah, you know, really I mean, very straightforwardly a fairy yeah. tale, and there are parallel love stories all the way mm -hmm. through. Right. When you uh, are approaching something like that, you know, it was written the novel in 1919, and it's set, you know, in the 1920s ish. Mm -hmm. Do you go and research that period of time, or actually doesn't it matter so much? It's about creating the world on the stage you know, in a separate I, thing. I'm, I'm a fan of, of research to a point. I think that, you know, I started out first as a choreographer, and, you know, anytime I was doing a historical piece, I would always learn the dance of that time. <clears throat> but just as a jumping off point, in a way, or just as just as a way to let the audience know I had done the research, but I think that nobody really wants to see historical dance. I think everyone wants to get a nod to what it could have been, but, but wants to see dance that references a period with the energy of today, because that's what we're used to. So we want that energy of today and the modern kind of take on it, even though we, do, we don't mind seeing a Charleston if it's a, a piece that's set in the 20s. But I think that it's hard to be slavish to that because I do think that it, it, it ends up being actually quite boring, really. So you take those steps and then you riff off of them, uh, I think. And I think that's the same for any rules about a period and about a time. You, you should know what they are, I think, just so you can get a basic sense of what, what was happening in the world or, you know, uh, one thing that we felt, you know, would be important would be to, um, to try to set it before you know, the stock market crash or any big events or hmm. not during a war, the, things like that. You know, you want to try to uh, uh, give it a, 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 sort a of shape authenticity like that. An authenticity, yeah. but you yeah. don't want to be, well, at least with a piece like this, to be really And is that the it. same for the quality of voices that you look for? Mm -hmm. that because there is quite a specific yeah. uh, and, and quite maybe arch tone for a yeah. 20s voice that you yes. don't have at all so yes well I think that um, you know because the other element which is kind of thrilling but also is difficult is you know when you're doing a, a new musical where music is not written for the show so you're taking existing music and you're trying to make it make it fit into the show and you're also trying to make it you know when we do there are songs that are we say book songs you know, a book song, uh, I'm sure you know, is the song that you try, that you use to move the plot along, really. So it has to be like someone's I want song. You've probably heard these terms, like when the lead character sings their I want song. So you have a sense of what is it that they are after in the, uh, in the course of the, the two and a half hours or whatever, that you have a sense of what they want. But, but because we're using music that existed already, so sometimes it's a, it takes a little bit of cobbling and a little bit of, you know, focusing to get, to get that, to work, some of them work brilliantly, and some of them, some of them are are, are, are more difficult, you know. So uh, I think that considering, uh, I think Jeremy uh, and Robbie and David Chase have done a great, great job with choosing that music and and making a great deal of it feel like book songs rather yeah. than just uh, 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 emotion songs or a feeling, a song that's just about a, a feeling. Yes, really. for for me certainly, nothing felt like. Oh, here's a song. Yeah. It felt purposeful as, as yeah. part of the, of the story. Well, nine of the songs that are in the show were written for the film. So we, you know, they wanted to try to use as many of those as we could in the show. So mm. uh, whether they are function in the, in the musical, the way they function in the film isn't always the case. But uh, well, I mean, one of the things that surprised me, um, in, you know, enjoying musicals on the one hand and Gershwin, you know, the Gershwin music and lyrics on the other, that I only knew two. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Which were? They were The Foggy, Foggy Day in Day London and Hand and Nice Work If You nice Can Get It. Get it yeah. And I didn't know any, I didn't know Fidgety oh, really? Feet and I didn't know any of the others, so it felt I, rather delightful. I was, uh, I was in Crazy For You in New York, so I was a right. dancer in that uh, New York production. So I knew a lot of the, uh, the Gershwin stuff from, from Crazy For You, because there are uh, three or four more songs in this <laughs> that we did in Crazy For You as well. Uh, so, but did your younger guys, your ensemble dancers, and they're a terrific ensemble, um, did they know those songs? Was this music they knew? No, no. they didn't really. No. 
So everybody here will know them. Yes. We're very yeah. literate <laughs> musically here, aren't we? Um, before I throw it open to questions, um, and I said right at the beginning, you know, this is your mm. first time here, and we're thrilled yeah. that you're here, finally. Um, how have you found working on this stage? I find this stage tricky. <laughs> but we're, Tell we're, me more, we Rob. <laughs> we're, we are becoming friends, become better friends every day. So, uh, I mean, I have worked on a, on a thrust stage before. I was a, an associate at the Donmar for four years, and that is... Uh, the same principles of a thrust, but nothing like this as far as the, the size. Um, I find it the trickiest uh, when you do the musical numbers. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the hardest then. We're trying to, it's been really a wonderful learning experience to try to take that on and try to include everyone all the time. So even though, even though it is... It is sort of a proscenium house because most of the seats are here, but it isn't. So you have to take in these folks as well. Mm -hmm. So we've been trying to, uh, to conquer that. And the actors, a lot of these actors have played here before, so they know that already, how to, how to open up to this To, this to make their shoulders yes. as appealing as their faces. Th that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. It's very interesting, though, because uh, the one thing I do notice in the musical numbers, because I've sat over here in these seats as well, is that uh, you feel like you're in the show. Like you feel like you're, one of the, you feel like you're in the third row of the kick line. <laughs> when you're sitting over there, which was just kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, uh, it seemed like a, an interesting vantage point. So uh, it is, it is, a, it is a, a, a beautiful theater, and it is a, a, a welcoming one. So don't, no one's having any problem with it. No one's having any issues mm -hmm. with it. I think that once everyone got in here, we had it taped out on the floor in the rehearsal room, and that's just not the same. It never is. No, no. You know, and you get in here and you realize, you know, we even put chairs up on the side and everything, and everyone's just no, no uh, acknowledgement. But we got in here and everyone was like, oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. <laughs> you know, but we have Dez and Isla, and we've got people that are, are leaders that, that yeah. know this yeah. space. So. Because the band's up above you, and yeah, it, it's up, up there. Above. It's not, yep. it's not mm. here in a pit, so that makes no, a difference as well, doesn't it? it does make it? a difference. Mm. But the sound is really good in here, and uh, the band is... is Terrific. The musicians are so good, yeah. and and Bill has done a really good job of instead of orchestrating this show to feel like, gosh, I wish I had 25, but I only have, you know, 12 or 13 or 14 or whatever. So I'm just gonna like do this and wish I had. He's he's made it for this number of people mm -hmm. and for these for these musicians, and it, and I think it sounds really really good, and I think it's very uh, uh, in a way true to the to the time to the period, like a. Mm -hmm. Like a dance band kind yeah, of thing, yeah. which is it's, it's yeah. really nice. And it's very light, as yeah. well as you know, being obviously melodic, but yeah. you don't feel overwhelmed no, by it. No, 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 not at all, no. not at all. Yeah. And so you've had fewer weeks than you might have if you were doing the show mm -hmm. in New York, um, and it's your first time on this stage, and it's a brand new musical. So mm -hmm. this is quite a lot of <laughs> pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is it the show that you thought it was going to be? Well, you know what? They never are exactly, mm. and and so in so many ways, it's uh, uh, it's even more. I want to say bigger. I don't mean bigger like in size, mm. but it but it is in a way. I mean, when we first started talking about this, we were going to do it in the Minerva. That's when we were first going to do it in the Minerva, and then as we started working on the show and developing it and figuring out and even getting a basic set design and trying to figure out what it could be, it felt like. You know, with all the different characters and the idea of wanting some dance as well, and, and it was like, I don't know, I don't know if we're going to fit. There's like a lot of costumes. There's a lot uh, <laughs> involved in the show. So uh, I had the chat with Jonathan, and, and that's when we decided maybe we should come in here. So uh, I'm glad we did. I think it was the right, the right move for the show. I, and I, I think there is... Um a joy of seeing a big show in a big space. I mean, everybody here loves the Minerva, mm -hmm. um, but also that sense of the expanse and the possibility of yeah. this big old stage. Yeah. Um, it's just great when it's full and the house mm -hmm. is full and it's, yeah, it you know, it feels true. like old fashioned theater. Yeah, we try to use, you know, we do use the VOMs, we try to use the, the theater a bit too to kind of uh, bring everyone into it. Uh, in a way, because it's Yeah, it's we nearly killed your cast. At the, a key did. moment when people were coming down, my mother-in-law's mm. stick fell in front of the main oh, aisle. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I was grasping it before everybody <laughs> that threw That was you. It. That was me. Yeah. I, well, it was not me, obviously. Um, um, we've got a, a few minutes for some questions. So can we have the house lights up a bit so I can just see if anybody's got a question? Um, 
Michael. Yes. As you probably know, we have the facility here for an orchestra pit. Yes. And we have, and we have had one musical. Music. Yes. Why did you decide not to use that facility? Can well, I just repeat the question? Yes, so sure, sure, can sure. Hear. The question was just, Michael's point was that there is facility for an orchestra pit, and the question to Rob was why he decided not to use it. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> when, you, if you haven't seen the show, when you see what's behind this Kitty in the City cloth, which is uh, Totley Towers, which is a, a very small but ample castle, you know, the, the amount of space that that takes up to do that properly and to... And to put the turntables in that move it around and all that. Had we used the orchestra pit here, it would have limited our performing space so much. Uh, so that was, that was the call. That was, that was the decision to give us the space uh, because the set itself uh, takes up quite a bit of, of, of you know, real estate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> real estate. Lady there, thank you. And then... Mm. Well, I mean... The question was about how a lovely phrase, how do, does uh, Rob <laughs> turn the artists when they have a different sense of interpretation? You just hold this thing in front of them <laughs> and say you're getting sleepy. Carrot stick. Sleepy. No. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, I always listen to them because sometimes they have a key. Because the thing is, you know, I, I look at the piece overall, they're looking at one person's journey inside the piece, so their insight is usually very helpful. Um, if it's too far in left field or if it's too far out, if they don't feel that themselves soon, then uh, yeah, you, just, you just have the chat. It's, it's, not, it's not too hard because you have to take, you have, I'm, I'm a go from, I'm a positive person myself. My cup's always half full, as, as I'm told. And I try to go from, okay, that part of it really works well for this guy. But that other part, I don't know if that uh, helps with the motor through. Try it, but then let's try the other one once and see what you think. Uh, it, well, if, it's, um, if they're super persistent or, or limited in a certain way or, or strict about it, it could potentially become an issue with their performance. I, I, unless it's your, lead, your leading man or your leading lady, <coughs> it couldn't derail the whole thing, I don't think. But I don't usually... And I have to say, I haven't had that issue. Certainly not on this show, but I'm trying to think of other shows too. That you know, somehow, they, everyone, we get everyone on the same page at the beginning. Everyone, you know, wants to to play nice. Everyone wants to play yeah. together. You know. And they want the show to work. They want the show to work. Yeah. They're working really, really hard. They work so hard. The crew works so hard. Everyone works so hard uh, to create something. We we said at the first day of rehearsal. We said it before our first preview. You know, it's like well, this is a very, we're very privileged that we are giving birth today to a new musical. It just does not happen very often. Mm. And, and it is a responsibility and a joy at the same time. And uh, no matter what the outcome is, whether, you know, critically or how many years it runs or how many companies of it there are, it is a, it is a very uh, special thing to get to do. The, and uh, we take it very seriously, even though we have fun doing it as well. Mm. You know. Greg. Um, I was very intrigued about how you described the process of using the previews to continue to tweak the production in advance of the, the day or the show that Kate described as lockdown mode, yeah. which is actually when the critics turn up. Right. Is, is there a place, you think, for the kind of dialogue, the active dialogue with the preview audiences, other than what you've described? Because mm. what you described was instinctively trying to anticipate didn't think you described, for example, having a post-show discussion. Yes. Uh, I, so, 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 I'm sorry, no, no, Rob. No, no, no. Thanks, Greg. Um, the, the question was about whether there is uh, essentially a place for a more formal dialogue between a preview audience and, and the creative mm -hmm. cast and crew, rather than just simply an, an instinctive one, which mm -hmm. is about how the audience reacts and interpretation. Right. I think that, in theory, it's a great idea. I think that the time limitation, I think maybe if you were doing a a four-week preview period, you might have more because more opportunity and then more opportunity to really take into account. But because you, if you, everyone has a different moment or point of view. So I think, it, I think that if you opened it up to say even a group this size, I think it would all end up kind of going like this. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know how much, uh, I think that you do, 
in a way, poll those audience members because we have, uh, in a certain sense, there's the people that run the theater that are here all the time, that, that have their people that speak to them. And, and you know, so you do get a, a sense of it in that way. But I also think, especially with this preview period, uh, I, I, I'm imagining that it might prove more chaotic in a certain kind of way, uh, getting particulars. Uh, I like the idea of it. And especially with the four week period, uh, 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 preview period, I think it'd be amazing to have that after like the second week. You know, because the first week, Half the stuff we do in the first week, we knew we needed to do, but we just didn't have time to do it. You know, so half the stuff you, you want to do anyway. Uh, so you certainly don't want, after the first preview, for someone to tell you, it's, this, this, the set shouldn't take that long to turn around. You're like, yes, I know that. Yeah. You're so right. You're yeah. so right. But after two weeks, if you're doing four weeks, I think that'd be, that'd be a great thing to do. Have a little uh, talk Have back. comments boxes. Yeah, yeah. Or well, that something. you could have that. You could yeah. have that, yeah. That might be a safer way of doing yeah. it. Is there a question over yeah, there? Gentleman there, thank you. How well would this show go down in New York? I think you all heard that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah? How well would the show uh, go down in New I, York? I don't, I don't know for certain. I would imagine it would go down well, I think. They I like think. Downton Abbey, you know. We love Downton you Abbey. You like Downton Abbey. We, we love Downton Abbey. We love the Brits. The Tonys are a perfect example of how, about how much we love <laughs> your theatre and what you do here. I do too. That's why I work here half the half the year or more. I love it too, and I I I uh, I, uh, uh, I think it would go over very well. Actually, that's just my opinion, but I do think it would go well. Is there a last question, because gentleman there? Thank you. Um, you, uh, you talk about uh, um, reacting to uh, audience um, and participation. What is your view, your personal view about the critics? So my my repeating of this question is critics boo, <laughs> but that I, wasn't actually the question. Yeah, How do you react? Yeah, to them? I, I do you read it? I don't ignore them. I don't ignore them. I don't uh, I don't let them define my experience or or the work itself. I don't let it completely. I always think there's something to learn from it. I do. I personally do. I, I'm not the guy who stands there with the, the phone and trying to just, you know, the second, like, is it, is that, are they out yet, are they out yet? I, I, I try not to let that, I used to be that way, but then you realize that doesn't, that it, all it was doing was taking away the experience of doing mm. the work mm. and doing the play and doing mm. the opening night and th that moment of all coming together. So I, uh, I uh, allow that to happen, and then I, but, I, but I do, but I, I want to learn from them. I want to learn about the piece, I want to learn about... But w would you change things? I mean, I mean, people here know that the director will be here for the first night and then he or she will be off to the next project mm -hmm. and there'll be mm -hmm. a working director in charge. Mm -hmm. So if all the reviews said, we love it, except that particular routine in mm -hmm. X, Y and Z mm -hmm. scene, not yeah. sure why it was there, would you take it out or would you just put it, chalk it up to experience? No, I, w uh, I would certainly consider it if the show happened again to do it. I certainly wouldn't read them and come running into this theater and like taking that out or changing an actor because no one liked that actor in the part or I would never do that. No, ever, yeah. never. But I mean, there's something to be learned there and also for, uh, I always try to apply the notes to the next, the next creative process in a way because they're less sometimes about the specific and they're more about, you know, I don't know, uh, not to say a problem you have, but like a certain kind of thing you have that maybe mm. maybe you need to listen to that. Maybe you need to listen to the fact that, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever. I, don't, I, I can't think of an example, but that, you know, it's too loud. It's always too loud. It's too busy. It's too, you, you don't understand what people are saying. It's too fast or anything like that. After, if you get that a few times, you should listen, mm. I think. So when we lose you on Thursday, what next? Well, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm going to be uh, I'm going to work with Ken Brand on his season in the West End, and uh, I'm going to co-direct Winter. I did uh, the Scottish play with him la uh, two years ago in Manchester, and then we took it to New York, and I'm going to co-direct Winter's Tale and Harlequinade with him, and then I'm going to direct him in The Entertainer, uh, which some of you will, of course, know from the Olivier Link. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can I'm see people about, in the front. Very excited about that. that. I'm excited about all those, you know. And so we're kind of keeping you anyway. Yeah. We kind of I think mean, it's I'm a here. just a link. I'm here, yeah. Well, I'm it's here. brilliant. I mean, I, we would love to mm -hmm. keep talking mm -hmm. to you, but we can hear uh, the company are getting ready to warm up. We must yeah. give the stage mm -hmm. back to the actors um, because otherwise you won't have the show you deserve. Mm -hmm. For those of you who have not yet seen it, it is an utter delight. It is one of those wonderful shows that you come out in the interval and at the end beaming. I mean, it's a, it's mm. a fantastic thing, and I think it's actually going to get the summer off to the mm. amazing start here, Rob. Good. Um, Good. So everybody is very grateful to you for making such a well, wonderful it's show. It's been my pleasure, and thank you for welcoming all of us here. It's been and, lovely. And you will all know uh, the drill, that there is a post-show talk, uh, which will be members of, uh, of the company, um, depending on who's available and who hasn't lost their voice, um, on the 22nd of June. Uh, there's also, on the 20th and the 21st of June, um, a weekend workshop about uh, damsel in distress. Um, if you go onto the website, uh, all the details are there. You obviously have to sign up for all of these things. With the post-show, you don't have to have come to the show that night, uh, but you do have to get a ticket uh, to make sure there's a spare seat for you afterwards. But for now, um, ladies and gentlemen, the very wonderful Rob Ashford. Mm, thank, Rob, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.